Yo, everybody, what's up? How are you doing tonight? I'm just going to give people a couple of moments to hop in here. Um, I don't know that anybody's in here just yet. So if you're watching on the replay, hope you guys are doing well whenever it is that you're watching this. Um, I haven't been on in a hot minute, and it's because I've got a newborn baby. Uh, he's just coming up on one month old. So the opportunities to stream are a bit um, less frequent these days since my wife is not working and we've got our hands full juggling three kids five years or younger. So um, just a little bit crazy around the house, but wanted to hop on, hang out with you guys for a short bit. Um, just hang out, drink a beer and show you a package that I got in the mail uh, just last week or so and uh, show you what's in here. Yeah, given the title, it may or may not be one of my last orders that I make for the year in terms of fishing tackle. So, um, of course, I'll still be making my monthly purchases from Discount Tackle, as always. But this was an order that I made from another place. Might say a warehouse that sells tackle. Um, one that I do not promote necessarily, but of course, we all shop there. And, um, and they've got a very, very wide selection of stuff. So with the order came, you know, the t-shirt that if you spend a certain threshold, I believe it's $150, which I pretty much spent right at that amount. Um, yeah, just a little bit more Then you get a t-shirt. So ordinarily, I think you just get a sticker if you spend 50 bucks, but want to hang out with you guys for a little bit, show you what I picked up in terms of spring gear. Um, some of this is stuff that was on my wish list. Some of it was on sale at the time. A few weeks back, Tackle Warehouse was doing a little bit of a promotion, um, selling some different things at a slight discount. So anyway, I'll show you what I picked up. They had a few things in stock that um, I've been wanting to pick up anyway. So Looks like Riley and Justin are in here already. What's up, Riley? How you doing? The family has been well. Thank you very much for uh, for saying so. Happy Easter to you as well, Justin. You and your family. Belated Easter uh, yesterday, but yeah, for sure, man. Uh, hope you guys had a great day. We had a pretty low-key Easter Sunday. Did some yard work. Had my parents over for a nice little afternoon hangout and dinner outside which was awesome because weather was gorgeous it was in the 70s here in Colorado and um, just perfect for us to be able to hang out outside um, keep safe and and do things the right way when it comes to hanging out with my parents so cheers guys hope you're doing well tonight Ron Holly in the building what's up Ron how you doing man um, I'll get back to your text messages after the stream, Ron, Ron and I have been chit-chatting a little bit. Justin had sent me, um, I guess, other Justin in Wyoming sent me a text the other day. And, uh, yeah, so I don't know if he'll be stopping in or not. But, guys, let's, let's get right into this. I'll show you what I picked up in this order, and then we'll move on and just kind of chit-chat for a little bit. I probably won't be on super, super long tonight, but... There's seven people in here right now. Two thumbs up. Do me a quick favor. Hit that thumbs up button. Um, really appreciate it. So, guys, I've got four jackhammer chatterbaits in the fire craw color here. Last year, this would have been like a gem. Impossible to get. This year, it's still been very difficult to come by. But every now and again, different places will stock up. So, I saw that Tackle Warehouse had them in stock a few weeks back, and I decided to pick up two in the three-eighths and two in the half-ounce. Um, as you guys know, Firecraw is a very effective spring, specifically early spring color, when water is cold and especially dirty. So mostly just because fish can see the color red better than anything, um, and it fires them up, per the name. Um... It also looks like a fire red crawfish. So anyway, um, decided to pick up four of these. Um, I throw the three eighths the most frequently, but I do throw the half ounce uh, if I'm fishing in slightly deeper water. And I think the only 
sizes that I had in the three eighths or in the fire craw color were three eighths. So I do throw that half ounce in the, um, the Heights hot craw, the red and green pumpkin one a fair amount. And, um, I can just keep that on bottom a little bit better. And I tend to fish the, uh, crawfish pattern ones down lower in the water column more so than say the bluegill patterns or the shad patterns when it comes to chatterbait fishing, you know, and part of that is just matching the hatch. But the other thing is just a confidence deal. So anyway, um, picked up four of the fire craw jackhammers and I did pick up um, four of the jackal TN70 lipless crankbaits. Let me catch up on these comments real quick. Yeah, Riley, of course you see that jackhammer. Justin says he's been messing around with his, his neighbor's boat trailer and his. Yeah, Justin, congratulations on the new boat, man. That is super, super cool. Uh, very fun, and I'm happy for you, man. That's uh, That should be a fun little project for you to take on. I know that you like to have projects when it comes to uh, maintaining and rebuilding and upkeeping. Um different things like your four-wheeler and now this boat. So that should be super fun for you. I'm happy for you, man. What? I didn't think I picked up two of these things. Um, so I think that Tackle Warehouse might have goofed up and accidentally given me two of these instead of one. If I'm not mistaken, I think I only ordered one. So I might end up giving one of these away, but... Before I get to those lipless crankbaits, I'll show you guys. I picked up the Lucky Craft Moon Salt 1.5 square bill crankbait. I've talked about this square bill before. I'm going to open one of them now, and I'll leave one of them unopened just in case I decide to give it away. But what's cool about this bait here is that it's a square bill crankbait with an awesome crawfish pattern. So what I love about it is that they don't put the traditional eyes on it. In fact, they paint the eyes on the rear of the bait. So as this thing is swimming away, um, it actually imitates a crawdad better than a, a traditional lure would. So uh, very solid color pattern here. And what's unique about the Moonsault series of baits is the sound inside. So a traditional Lucky Craft square bill. The 1.5 does not have a rattle of any sort. It's a silent square bill crankbait, but the Moon Salt instead has a bunch of really high pitched rattles in it and sounds more like a rattle trap or a lipless crankbait than any other square bill on the market. So a traditional rattling square bill would have like a knocker or just like a, a single uh, rattle in it would sound much different, but this high-pitched BB sound that the moon salt puts out is uh, More like a lipless crankbait So this really bridges the gap between a square bill and a lipless where you get the sound profile of a lipless But of course the action and the fishability of a square bill So I really like that concept and uh, and I had it already in I want to say the ghost minnow color But not in any of the craw patterns. So I decided to pick one of those up and it looks like maybe Tackle Warehouse accidentally gave me two of them. So I'm not really mad about that, to be honest with you. Matthew Acevedo just bought like $400 worth of tackle from the hookup. Damn, dude. Mainly for your birthday. Okay. Yeah, the hookup tackle is a sweet place to shop, honestly. But it can add up quick when you're shopping there. Let's be honest. Um... Because it's all JDM, high-end stuff. So even if you're not buying gear like rods and reels, if you're just buying baits, it can add up quick at $15, $20, $25 a bait. So not totally surprised, but I feel for you and your wallet, dude. <laughs> That's pretty brutal. Justin says he bought a saltwater fishing boat for salmon, lingcod, halibut, halibut, etc. And uh, if you guys don't know, Justin lives up in Washington State. So that should be super cool for you, man. Uh, to be able to go out on the water and chase a wide variety of species. You said you picked up the favorite rod, favorite rod, white bird rod the other day. Cool. I'm not very familiar with favorite rods. 
um, in terms of their, their rods or reels. So, um, good for you, man. In fact, I don't, do they even make reels? Maybe I'm mistaken about that. And you got an Abu Garcia Pro Max. Okay, that's a good reel, especially for the price. Good value reel right there. Simon in the house, doing well, man. Thank you very much. Happy Easter to you and your family as well, man. All right, Matthew says he's got like 10 square bills. Yeah, I've got about uh, 100. Um, not bragging whatsoever. It's just, you know, part of the addiction. Um, you know, I had enough to fill like two of these boxes. I decided to move them into different boxes, um, the smaller ones. So I've got like four of those uh, probably with, I don't know, 10 to 15 each. And that's not all my square bills. Um, anyway. Let's move on to lipless crankbaits, guys. This is the Jackal TN70. I've got a couple of these already um, in this traditional model. And again, this is the, the TN70. They make it in a 50, a 60, and a 70. And the 70 is really, um, if you guys watch Tactical Bass, and you would know that this bait right here falls into the same category as like the Lucky Craft LB500. So this is a 70 millimeter, 5 8 ounce bait. Um, so a little bit smaller than the LB500. It's not quite three inches long, and the LB500 is three quarters of an ounce. So this is just slightly smaller, but it is a relatively heavy lipless crankbait for its size. And what makes it unique is the tungsten lip on it that will cause it to sit nose down um, on the bottom at rest. So it will rest with its tail up, and um, this is made to be more of a bottom bouncing lipless crankbait. So I had it in like a ghosty color, ghost minnow, and then a, uh, a crawfish color, like a brown craw type of color pattern. This has a traditional rattle in it, pretty loud. Um, got that in the gold color and then also one in more of like an Aurora black type of color. They call it, yeah, Aurora black. So just like Lucky Craft, this is going to be a, a silver side, blue back type of deal. Same rattle in this one. So very loud rattling bait. And then I picked up two of the TN70 disc knocker. So this essentially is their one knocker version of the same bait, okay? I'll pull these out of the box for you. I, I mainly pulled the trigger on these because of the, the colors that they had available at the time. And um, this was one that I definitely wanted in my arsenal. Wow, they've got the hooks stuck in the packaging. And so this color is called Angry Craw. And as you can see, it's like a fire craw type of pattern. It's primarily orange with a little bit of red on the back. It's got that red eye. And if you listen, it is essentially just a one knocker. So uh, there's a disc in there, but it's different than like the Lucky Craft. Oh, I, I forget what they call it. The LV uh, 200. I don't know. They're, one of them has a, a metal disc in there, like a plate. Um, that makes more of a tinny sound and this is a little bit closer to like a standard one knocker sound so um, anyway they call it the disc knocker and I also got one in a color they call muddy shad so this is a bit more translucent of a bait and I'm happy about that it did not look translucent um, on the website could not tell um, until now when I look at it there is literally a disc inside that looks kind of like a battery Can you guys see that? Um, it looks like a battery that you would put in I don't know a calculator or something like that one of those uh, mid-size Like a little bit smaller than your pinky nail Piece of metal that is round and um, a few millimeters thick it is just free floating in that middle rattle chamber. So pretty cool. Um, I thought this was going to be a little bit more white of a bait, not nearly as translucent as it is. 
It's called Muddy Shad. So it'll be interesting to see how this performs in a variety of light conditions because from what I see right now, it looks pretty translucent. So anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. Here's an interesting bait that I've, I've never tried before, but it was on sale at Tackle Warehouse at the time. And this is by Venom Lures, and they call it the Super Dew Creature Bait. This is a four inch creature bait. It was cheap and, uh, and caught my eye just because of what it is. It's like a hybrid between a grub and a tube bait. And it's hard to say what it's most like. The body feels a lot like, um, like a brush hawk, but it's a short little one and a half inch body and then a long tail. And it's got about a half a dozen or so um, little appendages off the tail, kind of like a tube would. And then these almost fins coming off the side. So very unique. Um, I would throw this on a drop shot. I would throw it on a jig head. Just kind of fish it like a Ned rig perhaps. But I had never seen that bait before. And it was like, I don't know, either the special of the day or sitting somewhere in the clearance section or something like that and uh, decided to throw it in with the order it was kind of just an impulse buy i don't really fish anything from venom so interesting all right justin so favorite does make reels yeah, i thought they did matthew says i like the battalion vibration x um from mega bass those are Two different baits. The Battalion is a swim bait. The Vibration X is a lipless crankbait. So I assume you're talking about the Vibration X. All right, we got one more hard bait in here and then some soft plastics that I want to show off um, that I actually haven't had a chance to get my hands on and see in person until now. So this right here is a bait that you've seen on this channel before. And this is the dual hardcore popper. And um, for whatever reason, dual hardcore baits are kind of in and then out. Uh, seem to be on sale a lot at most retailers. So I can't tell if they're going to stay for good or what the deal is. But I got to say, I'm a big fan because... All of Dual Hardcore's baits, or the vast majority of them, have this patented um, magnetic weight transfer system in them. Very cool deal where, I don't know if you heard that, but there's a magnet that when you cast, it transfers to the tail of the lure. So you get tremendous casting distance out of these baits. And they've even put the technology in small lures like this popper. Most of the time you'd see magnetic weight transfer systems in like suspending jerk baits. Uh, but honestly, they've got them in their like walking baits, in their crank baits, in top water poppers. So very cool deal. This is what they call matte black. And it's tough to see in this light, but it is literally a matte black finish with some purple flake in there. So I doubt you guys can see the purple flake too well in this lighting. They've got a orange cup on orange cup face on it and a black feather treble hook. So this will be great in low light conditions um, in particular, but probably also good in the middle of the day in high sun. So I had a couple of those already in my arsenal, um, but in more translucent and traditional colors. So I'll show you. I, I had one in uh, like a chartreuse shad color, chartreuse top, a little bit of an orange belly, red cup face. And had one in what they call like a chrome ghost IU or something like that. And to be honest, I picked these baits up from Discount Tackle uh, a few months ago and absolutely love them. Not that I've 
had the opportunity to really fish them, but I think just in terms of value and quality, um, they're almost second to none. So seeing that they were disappearing from a, a variety of retailers, and I can't quite tell what's happening with dual hardcore, whether they're going to stay in the U.S. market or not, I decided to pick up another one of those, especially because I love that matte black color. So uh, Matthew says, no, they make a Battalion Vibration X. Look it up. Okay, I will, man. Sorry about that. Saltwater lure, huh? Well, I will definitely check them out. What's up, William? Wife and kids are doing well, man. Um, the two girls are asleep now. My wife and the baby are upstairs while my wife is uh, doing a little Zoom call. Group FaceTime for uh, book club. She's in a book club with some other gals. And so tonight is their meeting. And, and so I was able to, to get away and do a, a short live stream with you guys. So the rest of what I've got in here is from Savage Gear. And these are all new as of last year's iCast. Okay, so um, they weren't really available until just recently. And I'm pretty sure Tackle Warehouse is one of the few places that you can find them. So I decided to pick up about a half a dozen packs or so. And uh, well, I guess I guess we could start out with uh, some of the stuff that already existed. So Savage Gear used to make a 3D craw. And... Um, now they make the 4D craw. I posted about this bait on Instagram the other day. Um, different color because I was able to find it at a store here locally. Um, and I forgot, honestly, that I had this one sitting at home in this package. So uh, now I've got them in green pumpkin and this like Alabama craw. So I got to say Savage Gear makes some really good stuff. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not, but what makes the 4D craw different from the original 3D craw is two things primarily. Uh, well, one, they've added a little bit more detail to the baits. They were already made from a 3D scan of an actual crawfish. But what they've done is changed... Um, the actual mold so the original 3d had a you know two separate pieces uh, one for the the body of the bait or the the tail I should say and one for the body and it was a hollow body and I think maybe even hollow cross so now it's all one mold and it's all solid plastic um, so it's gonna have a different um, action to it but it's also going to be more durable and easier to rig in a wide variety of ways and the other thing that they did is scent this bait and it's got a gnarly um, combination of amino acids and <coughs> I don't know what else is in it but it stinks um, in a very fishy way so, I like that. This is called Alabama Craw, green pumpkin on top, orange on bottom. And, um, yeah, I'll put this back in the package later. But, oof, <coughs> that stinks. And um, is a very, very realistic looking, cool vape. Uh, one that I'm excited to throw, especially because this 4-inch size is a bit more versatile and more realistic. A lot of the craws that are in my bodies of water are not only brown kind of like this dark green pumpkin but they're big so this four inch size compared with say uh like a three inch is a lot more realistic looking so you get that combined with the actual details that go into the bait itself and i'm a big fan of that so um the fact that the the mold is a one piece mold means that they can charge less for these baits so these come six to a pack and are like seven bucks for the pack. So when you think about what you get for what you pay, um, I would put these in a class 
alongside or above something like what you get from the Gee Crack, you know, those Japanese soft plastics, um, like the Bellows Gill, and some of these other baits that they're putting out and charging an arm and a leg for. With these, you're paying like $2 a bait, and um, with the Savage Gear baits, I think you're paying like a dollar per. So, uh, much more affordable. So, anyway, um, Nate Sommers in the building. What's up, dude? How you doing? Russ Dennis, what's up, man? Yeah, me neither, Russ. I've only been out like twice so far this year, and we had snow up until like a week ago. So it's been very difficult conditions. The water is super high and dirty, and the bass just are not quite ready. They're not moving up. Um, they're not really in the spring mode of things just yet, but weather is stabilizing, becoming a little bit more springish. So I am crossing my fingers that I'll catch my first bass of the year here in the next week or so if I have a chance to get out um, a couple times. So I'll keep you guys posted about that, but... You said the spawn's going to be here any week now, huh? And you still haven't caught a bass. Well, sorry to hear that. Um, I wish you the best of luck, man. So next up is a sweet little bait called the Savage Gear Ned Minnow. And check this thing out. So, yeah, I thought so. This is made from um, a material that Savage Gear calls Duratech. And it is like a Laztec, um, where it's stretchy and super durable. As you can see, this is a segmented swim bait with a boot tail of sorts on it. And this is a very natural color, a bait fish profile. They call this smallmouth magic. Um, it looks a bit more muted and natural than I thought it would. But it has like a, a greenish back pearlish belly with a little bit of blue flake in there so very cool color pattern here um where you could throw this on a mushroom style jig head and fish this like a ned rig and it will stand because of its buoyancy um or you could throw on a ball head jig or keep it on that ned head and swim it through the column so um it's made with a blunt nose to, to be fished with a Ned head, essentially. But I think you could do a, a wide variety of things with it. I think it would perform really well on a drop shot as well. So the Savage Gear Ned Minnow, I picked up two packs of them, one in that smallmouth magic color and this one in a color that they call Clear Chartreuse. I'm going to refresh my page here because it looks like things just went a little bit blurry on my end. I can't tell if it did for you guys or not. So um, bear with me for one second. Tell me in the comments below, do I look blurry? Is my connection bad or um, is it just an issue with my computer? And do, is it streaming just fine for you guys? Matthew says... He caught 16 so far. Caught a PB already. What did you say? Seven pounds up in Jersey. Dude, that's killer. Congratulations on the seven pounder. That is wicked. What'd you catch him on, Matthew? The carp spawn is about to be here in Louisiana. William, what? Oh, you're going to pull out your bow? Try and go shoot some carp. All right, man. Well, keep us posted on that. That's pretty wild. And fun. William Plunkett, you gotta you gotta dip out, no problem, man. <laughs> Ron says he's had a six pack of beer tonight, and so I look fine no matter what, whether it's blurry or not. He'll just blame it on his eyes. I don't know how to put this package back together, but I'm gonna move on. I've got just uh, two other lures that I want to show you from Savage Gear, which are also new this year. So the Ned Minnow and the 4D Craw are new on the market, uh, were released last year at ICAST. And they also released a few other Ned baits. 
And this one here is called the Ned Gobi. It is blur, you say. Let me see if I can fix that up, dude. I'm sorry. I mean, it looks okay when I'm looking at it now. I don't know. If it is blurred, I'm super sorry about that, guys. I hope it's okay. But I honestly can't tell. And it looks blurry on my computer right now. So I hope it's just the connection on my computer and not on my phone where I'm streaming from. But I'm going to try refreshing again. So this is the Savage Gear Ned Gobi right here. And this right here is a very interesting one because check this thing out. So Matthew, when you say just have to refresh, do I have to refresh on my phone? Because I think I'd have to end the stream. I refreshed on my computer, but it's not working. Um, when I look at my computer to see what you guys are saying in the chat, it looks blurry. Just in a soft focus. Dang it, dude. I'm sorry. I don't I don't want it to be blurry for you guys. That's brutal. See to me that looks just fine. Like I can see it when I'm looking at it. Let me flip around my my computer and see what you guys are saying. And maybe I'll just uh Show you like so. Can you see that as well as I can? Because on my computer it looks blurry, but on my phone, this looks banging. How do I refresh, Matthew? I don't really want to end this stream. <laughs> Soft focus, he says. What are you talking about, Ron? Oh. Well, that's going to end the strip if I try and do that. <laughs> Ron says he's going to pop another beer right now. Guys, would you hop back on if I freaking end this stream and hop back on for a little bit? I want to show you these two baits and I want to hang out for a few more minutes. Turn the camera off. See, I don't know how to do either one of those because I'm in the YouTube app. All right, I'm coming right back in a minute, guys. So cancel out of this and go to my page. I'm gonna start a new stream. <laughs> 